Today I'm going to discuss this rendering that I did of the SGI Infinity Cube in Maya 6.5 on my Silicon Graphics Tezro. This rendering was inspired by the Bump Logo demo, which was a demo which SGI produced for the Onyx machine back in the day when it was current. So this inspired me to create an environment which was different, but also including your reflective surfaces such as stone and a little bit of bump mapping as well, but a little bit of metal in the scene, a little bit of Damascus steel. So I wanted to make the scene itself rather interesting when you take it from a materials point of view. The rendering that you see here was rendered at 1920 by 1080 and it took approximately four hours to render. So that was a pretty large amount of time. The reason for this is twofold. Firstly, the scene itself contains a large number of vertices. So it's got a very high vertex count. And that is also coupled with the fact that the light source or the only light source that you see in the scene is actually comprised of six area lights which have been positioned at 90 degrees to each other and each of those lights has ray tracing enabled and is emitting eight rays so that coupled with the large vertex count as well as the textures that you see in the scene resulted in the image taking approximately four hours to render I posted the completed rendering on IREX network as well as the Silicon Graphics user group discord and one of the members on the Discord requested that I possibly animate the scene. And obviously you can imagine if it's taking four hours to render a single frame, if you wanted to render a scene of 150 frames, it would probably take weeks to render on a machine such as a Silicon Graphics Tezra. So I did go ahead and animate the scene. And this is what you see here. So I've just started the rendering of the scene. I'll just discuss the setup itself. So I've got the seen as I've constructed it. The light source being the wisp, which you saw within the rendering is currently off the screen. And as the animation progresses, it'll come in from the left hand side, rise up into the air and then circle the sphere, which has the SGI infinity cube placed within it. So you're going to get a rather interesting lighting effect as the wisp approaches the scene and then enters into this um, dais and you'll get quite a nice reflection of light within the construction itself as well as how it interacts with the sphere and the SGI infinity cube. Because it takes so long to render I'm only able to render it at 640 by 480. Um, it took quite a bit of optimizing in order to get it to even be able to be rendered at this um, resolution. A big change that I made is I changed the lighting in the scene, so the lighting that is used in the scene now also consists of a single light source. Initially I tried to make use of a ambient light as the light source for the scene, but it didn't produce the desired results. So I found that the scene itself was being lit too much outside this area and the shadows weren't being produced in a way which I liked. So that's why I went with the arrangement of six area lights in the original scene. And what I've done now is I've actually modified that again. And I now have two spotlights positioned 180 degrees opposed to each other. And each one of these um, spotlights is producing light through a 180 degree arc. So that basically gives me my spherical light source, which I've placed within the wisp. So that's the lighting that's now being used in the scene. I've also reduced the number of rays being emitted by each one of the two lights to three rays. So the ray tracing itself isn't as high a quality as it was in the original scene. But I unfortunately couldn't render with a higher level of ray tracing because even at this low resolution, it was taking about 20 minutes a frame to render. And that was a bit unacceptable. There's no ways I could render a scene which consists of 150 frames when it's taking 20 minutes to render a single frame. With the current setup, it's taking between 6 minutes and 14 minutes to render these frames at 640 by 480, and there are 150 of them. So it's going to take a considerable length of time for this rendering to be complete. Okay, I just messed that up. I had the settings set so that it only rendered the first 10 frames in the scene. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to change it to the 150. But what that's done is it allows me to show you a little bit of the video as it would appear from the start. 
Okay, so it's a few, you could say microseconds or milliseconds of film. But there we go. So you can see as the wisp approaches the scene from the left hand side, you can see the way the light from that light source is interacting with the scene itself. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to change that. I'll just call it one. Okay, so what I'm now going to do is restart the batch rendering process. So I'll go into batch render. Just make sure that it's making use of all the CPUs in the machine. And then hit batch render. And there it starts. Okay, and as soon as it starts rendering, you'll see that uh, another file will appear. Yeah, I changed the name of this one so it doesn't render over this file. But as it does a batch rendering, what makes it rather complex is the fact that you can't see what it's actually doing. So you've got to be very careful as to how you set it up because you can very easily render a perspective that you don't want to render. So a way in which you can do that, which I'll show you now once it starts rendering, is as it builds up the video, it builds it up in parts. And it's now about to start rendering, so while you've got this little torus here, it hasn't started rendering to the file yet, but once it starts rendering to the file, you can actually see it frame by frame as it starts getting rendered. Okay, so it should start very soon. Okay, there it goes. Okay, so as soon as that little torus disappears, it's now rendering to that file. I'll just give it a couple of seconds, just so that it can start. Okay, so double click on it, and there you can see one of the pillars, so it's starting to render the first frame. Okay, and you can actually see the progress that you're making here, so it's 10% of the first frame that's done currently. Okay, so I will continue this video once the scene is completely rendered, and this will probably take around about two days.